<laughs> hey everybody, JC here with a special Halloween edition of the TNI Toy Review. And for today's review, we're going to be taking a look at the new Nightmare on Elm Street 3 Dream Warriors Ultimate Freddy Krueger figure from NECA Toys. Now this figure comes packaged in the same style packaging we see with all the Ultimate figures. You've got the box on the image. You've got a recreation of the movie poster with Freddy there and his claws sticking out. You've got the logo for the third movie on the sides. You again just have the logo. And then on the back of the packaging, you have images of the figure and the various accessories that come with it. And then like with all the Ultimate figures, you can open up this front flap and you've got the figure clearly displayed inside. And then on the other side, you've got some more artwork for the figure. All right, let's get this open and take a look at what's inside. Okay, so here's a look at the figure outside of the packaging along with the other contents. Now, before I get into the review, let me just give you a heads up about the TNI toy question of the day. The new edition, which is a special Halloween edition, is up on my Facebook page. Once again, you'll have a chance to win $100 store credit to Big Bad Toy Store. So if you haven't checked it out already, then head over to my Facebook page after you finish watching this video. I'll have a link in the video description below. Now this figure comes with a number of different accessories. These are all based on the Dream Warrior movie, the third installment in the Freddy Krueger movie series. And first we get this house replica which we see when uh, Kristen, the character Kristen played by Patricia Arquette, gets sucked into Freddy's house. So this is basically just a replica of Freddy's house and it's all boarded up and tiles are missing from the roof and everything. So it's a pretty accurate representation of how we see the house in the Movie. Next we get this little miniature Freddy figure. This thing stands about just a little bit over two inches and this is a uh, basically in the movie Freddy takes over this puppet and in the hospital and ends up manipulating one of the kids to walk off the ledge of a, a second story or third story window and so this is you know it's a pretty nice representation of that nice sculpting detail on the head for such a small little figure and then you've got the sculpting throughout the body he's got the claws and these are done with a kind of flexible plastic with metallic silver and the figure does have a little bit of articulation you can turn uh, move the arms and you can move the head and then you've got this little figure stand that they included which looks like a little splotch of blood or something and it uh, just attaches with a peg on the bottom of the left foot. However, even with that little figure stand, unfortunately I've not been able to get this figure to stand at all. So it would have been better probably if they'd made that stand a little bit bigger because as it is I've just not been able to get this figure to stand. We get this alternate chest piece for the figure and it's got Freddy's shirt that's ripped open and you can see his inside skin with all these faces that stick out and this again is nicely sculpted the paint applications you've got some darker colors mixed in with the browns here on the skin and really nicely detailed with the faces that are sticking out so definitely a, a nice piece and this is a scene I definitely remember from the movie that stood out to me in the movie and again you got the ripped shirt hanging off the sides just a hard plastic and the way this works is you just, uh, you can see the little line creases here up on his shoulder so you can just uh, stick your fingers and kind of pry it loose a little bit. And it just attaches with pegs so you just pull it off like that and then you take the alternate piece and you just plug it in. And it fits on there pretty good. You get a little bit of seams here on the side and up here on the shoulders, but overall, you know, it fits on there pretty nicely. Next, we get this extra set of hands, and these, both of these hands, the right and the left hand, have these hypodermic needles that we see in the movie. He's fighting one of the dream warriors and um, basically ends up shooting her up with, you know, she's an ex-druggie and he ends up shooting her up with drugs. And so the tips here, you can see, are kind of a semi-translucent plastic, and they've got a, a blue translucent plastic to look like the drug, and then you've got the needles. So you've got the one hand with the glove, that has the hypodermic needles and then you have his regular hand that also has the hypodermic needles because he ends up using both hands when he shoots her up. So, And this one's got the sculpting detail with the burnt off skin and everything. You've got the semi-blue translucent plastic for the hypodermic needle, the drug 
portion of the hypodermic needle. And switch so. the hands out. You just pull off the hands. You've got the hole in the hand and the little ball peg on the arm and then you just uh, push it in and you got for this uh, left hand you really got to push it in tight or hard and kind of turn it. Take be a little tricky but once you get it it pops in and then it stays in there nice and tight and then the gloved hand is a little bit easier again you just pull it off and then plug it in and again both hands stay on there nice and tight and then the hands that are attached to the figure when you first take it out of the packaging for the left hand it's just a regular burnt hand and again nice sculpting detail and paint applications on that to give it that burnt look and it's on both sides of the hand and then the other his right hand is his clawed hand his regular claws and these are done with a pretty soft plastic so they do bend a little bit you might even need to straighten them out a little bit with a blick a hair dryer or something and they're done with a metallic silver and you've got nice detailing with the glove and everything would have been kind of cool if maybe the fingers were articulated on this but as it is it does look pretty good they give us Freddy's hat and this is done with a rubber tape material and it just fits it fits on the head pretty good you know it doesn't fall off or anything so I like that I think it looks pretty good it doesn't look too big or anything so I definitely like the hat and how it looks on the figure and then finally we get two different head sculpts with this figure. The regular head, which is the one attached to the figure when you take it out of the packaging, it's got the burnt skin and you've got the lighter and darker color so it's a nice wash effect. And I like how it looks like some pieces of skin are missing and everything. Very much how he looked in the movie. Even like on the ears and such. He's got the rotted yellow teeth. And I think the face sculpt looks very much how it, like how he did in the movie. So definitely I like this head sculpt and you've got the nice detailing all the way around even on the back. And on the neck. The color on the neck is a little bit lighter than the head but I think it matches pretty good. And then to switch out the heads you just pull it off. It's attached with the ball joint and then you just pop on the, the second head. And you do have to kind of push it a little bit to really get it to pop on good but once you do it fits on there nice and tight. Now this second head has a light bar in it so you've got the semi-translucent crucifix on his forehead like you saw in the movie. He's got his mouth open. Looks like he's screaming. Again you have the nice sculpting detail with the burnt skin and the darker and lighter colors throughout but then on the back of the head you've got this opening with the semi translucent plastic and so what's the what the reason for this is is to make it look like that crucifix is lighting up so if you get the light on it right then that crucifix uh, looks like it's lit up like you see in the movie so a pretty cool effect overall and the hat will fit on the second head as well so if you just want kind of that screaming look with the mouth open but you don't want the crucifix fix showing then you can put the hat on and it'll cover that up. So for the figure itself, I think NECA's done a nice job with the sculpting and overall paint applications, especially on the sweater. You've got this line work sculpted in there to give it that kind of wool look, and I like you've got the little missing pieces on the bottom, that tattered look to make it look like worn, and then you've got some wash effect throughout the sweater to make it look a little bit dirty. Again, you have a hole here on the back. So I like that look for the sweater and the sculpting detail on it. The pants are just a dark gray color, um, not really any kind of wash effect or anything and look pretty clean overall. I like the wrinkles and everything, the folds and stuff that they've sculpted in the pants though. And then he's just got the brown shoes with the laces and everything. So again, nice sculpting detail overall with, with that. So this figure stands just a little bit over seven and a quarter inches tall. For articulation, you can turn the head to the left and to the right, and he's got a little bit of forward and back movement, and you can kind of pivot the head to the left and the right as well. Arms you can get out good, and he's got good rotation there at the shoulder. He doesn't have a bicep swivel. He does have a rotation there at the elbow, just a single hinged elbow, so he can bend his elbow about that much. And then he's got rotation at the wrist, and he's got a little bit of up and down movement with the hand are attached with those ball joints but not a whole lot doesn't have an ab crunch does have a waist swivel you can do the splits good with this figure you can get the leg forward pretty good and you can do the leg back pretty good as well you also have a rotation a thigh rotation up high there on the leg he's got the single hinge knee so he can only bend his knee about that much he does have a rotation there at the knee and then for the feet they're just attached with ball joints but you've got the pants that come down over the ankles so you've got a little bit of back and forth or up and down movement but not a whole lot and you can uh, turn the feet a little bit but it doesn't really have much in the way of ankle pivot or anything like that and then two peg holes on the bottom of the feet 
Okay, so that's my review. Overall, I really like this figure. I think NECA's done a great job with the sculpting and paint applications on the figure. You get some pretty cool accessories and the articulation is not too bad on it either. So this figure is hitting shelves now. We'll have a full image gallery up at toynewseye.com. There'll be a link in the video description below. As always, leave a comment. Let us know what you think. If you're so inclined, please like the video. Also, if you haven't already, please follow me on my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. I'll have links to those in the video description as well. Make sure you have a safe and happy Halloween today. And until next time, I'll catch you guys later.